All right, let's get to let's talk more about this in a very important day. Joining me now, Republican Congressman from Kentucky, Congressman Thomas Massey. Congressman, thank you so much for the time. Thank you, Kate. Thanks for having me on. Of course. You've seen these horrific images. Let's talk about Syria first. You've seen these horrific images of people, children coming out of Syria right now. No public statements from no public comments from the president yesterday, but then a statement. He calls it reprehensible, but then the president blames it on Obama, saying this in part. He says these heinous actions by the Bashar al-Assad regime are the consequence of past administration's weakness and irresolution. Congressman, is the solution to this problem blaming the president before him? It, it breaks my heart to see those images of the victims, I have to say that. Um, let me tell you, Kate, the only issue I've received more phone calls on, other than the Affordable, or the Affordable Care Act, if you will, was going to war in Syria in 2013. President Obama said that Assad crossed a red line in 2013, if you remember, and he said that we, were, we should go to war with Assad, that Assad must go. But, and he came to Congress authorization. We never gave it to him because constituents melted our phone lines. Frankly, people uh, want us to take out ISIS, I believe, but it's dubious uh, as to whether it serves the American interest to take out Assad. Right, but that goes to directly to my question. The president's only public statement so far has been to blame President Obama for inaction. Is blaming President Obama the answer here? Um, I don't believe so. I'm not going to blame Obama. He's gone. It's our, uh, it's ours to deal with now. And uh, you know, I appreciate that President Trump campaigned on a more restrained uh, foreign policy, and I hope that's what we see in Syria and North Korea. Mm -hmm. So you have fellow Republican John McCain. He has a very different position than you on Syria. Uh, I want to play for you what he said this morning and what he would like to hear from President Trump following this. Yeah. Listen. I want to say, I want him to hear him say, we're going to arm the Free Syrian Army. We are going to uh, dedicate ourselves to the removal of Bashar Assad. We're going to have the Russians pay a price for their engagement. The Iranians and Hezbollah are also heavily involved. All players here are going to have to pay a penalty, and the United States of America is going to be on the side of people who fight for freedom, and, uh, and we will not sit by and watch chemical weapons being used to slaughter innocent women and children. That's John McCain speaking out yesterday. Yeah. Congressman, as you, you are against intervention. You say that is what you hear from your constituents, and you say that's what you heard from your constituents previously. But as you yeah. sit here today and you see these images coming out of the slaughter of innocent children, does that change your view? Well, with all due respect to the senator from Arizona, he's wrong. And he's not expressing the will of the American people. But I hope that the senator I, and I can agree that President Trump cannot unilaterally attack a country. He cannot commit an act of war against a sovereign nation without a vote in Congress. So this really isn't up to Rex Tillerson or the president at this point. If, if, they the president, though, if the president of Syria is committing crimes against humanity, slaughtering his own people, do you think there is something short of going to war with Syria that you can support? Your fellow, your fellow, your fellow Republican, Adam Kitzinger, says, yes, there is something short of that. You can ground Assad's air force. You can crater the airstrips that the air force is taking off from to commit these atrocities. Well, can you get on board well, with that? Well, I can't speak about classified information on TV, but I can tell you, according to the Washington Post, we've been spending a billion dollars a year in funding the rebels in Syria to no good effect, frankly. Right, but that's it's not funding prolonged. the rebels. What do you think about grounding? What do you think about grounding Assad's air force? I, well, you know, we had testimony from a, a military expert in front of Congress that said that's a virtual act of war in uh, in Syria and that we would be at war with the Russians at that point. I think it's a bad idea. Earlier today, Congressman Bana, she's a little Syrian girl who's become really the voice of all Syrian children in this war. She spoke to CNN, and, and here is what she said that her wish is. Listen. I want stop the war, and I want the, the children of Syria play and go to school, live in peace. We can, together, we can help them. 
together we can save them. To be clear, what she said right there is that's all she wants. She wants to, for the children of Syria to be able to play and go to school. She's pleading for help. What do you say to her, Congressman? I, I think what she's asking for is something that all children should enjoy. And I think that our intervention in Syria has prolonged the civil war, and it is not helping there. Uh, President Trump campaigned on a more restrained fiscal, or I'm sorry, a more restrained foreign policy. And I hope that's what we see. And, you know, we haven't created a better school environment for the children in Iraq, uh, frankly, by destabilizing that country. And I don't think it serves the children of Syria or anybody in the United States to further destabilize Syria. So you say, you see these, you hear that plea from her, you see the images coming out of Syria, and you think the best policy for the United States right now is to do nothing. What I'm saying is we could, we might end up making the situation worse if we launch airstrikes, if we, uh, against their airplanes, against hard targets on the ground. The, uh, so we really need to step back and take a good look at this. The first casualty of war is the truth, and it's hard to know exactly what's happening in Syria right now. I'd like to know specifically how that release of, of chemical gas if it, uh, if it did occur, and it looks like it did, how that occurred. Because I don't, frankly, I don't think Assad would have done that. It does not serve his interests. It would tend to draw us into that civil war even further. Who, who, do, you think, who do you think is behind it? You think you, who do you think is behind it? You know, you've got a war going on over there. Uh, supposedly, that airstrike was on an ammo dump. And so I don't know if it was released because there was gas stored in the ammo dump or not, uh, that's plausible. I'm not saying that's what I think happened, but Are I you're think more inclined to believe the position of of what Bashar al-Assad is saying and what the Russians are saying right now than more inclined to agree with believe what your even your colleagues here in the United States believe is truth that this is Assad and what human rights observers over there say is Assad. I don't think it would have served Assad's purposes to do a chemical attack on uh, on his people. So. I, you know, it's hard for me to understand why he would do that if he did. Congressman Tom Massey, thanks for your time. Thank you, Kate.